Now, when it comes to happiness and success in life, emotional intelligence matters a lot. It is one of the most important types of intelligence which all humans should have. Now, to make sense of this, I am joined by Abiola Salami, who is a performance coach, to discuss more about emotional intelligence. Good afternoon, Mr. Salami. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. Good to have you here. Now, let's begin. What is emotional intelligence? Help us unbundle it. Okay, so emotional intelligence is that ability of an individual to understand his or her emotions based on the understanding, manage his or her emotions. Then on the other part, also understand the emotion of other people people the person relates with at work or at home mm -hmm. and based on the understanding of the emotions of other people build effective relationships with them now how does this outplay in workplaces for instance okay so so before now i mean there's been a lot of concentration on iq intelligence quotient in fact many people when they are interviewed to get a job uh, the interviewer is always more interested in uh, the level of iq of the individual mm -hmm. then you see someone who is brilliant had a first class in school or even a two one in school legitimate and the person gets on the job and after a while you realize that technically the person is sound but when it comes to relating with people when it comes to leading other people when it comes to attending to customers then the person is not effective and such that it leads to poor performance on the job mm -hmm. then of course um, reduce productivity for the organization as well that's on the job in the in the home front I mean every now and then issues between uh, a husband and wife issues between even siblings or even parenting as well what you find happening is because people don't have a critical skill of emotional intelligence, for example, called empathy. Mm -hmm. Empathy says seek first to understand before you are understood. And so when you don't understand your spouse, and you just want your spouse to understand you by force, it leads to conflict. Mm -hmm. It leads to family breakdown, and so there are cases of divorce happening. And then the kind of children that will come out from that kind of home as well, uh, they are not responsible people in the society. Now, let's talk about emotional intelligence in the workplace. Research has also shown that, you know, um, where people pay attention to the emotional intelligence of their employees, for instance, it has a direct bearing in terms of productivity. Yes. Now, uh, in cases, in other places of work, how do we manage, how do we, what is the right thing to do for, you know, employers and employees to pay attention to each other's uh, emotional Emotions. needs, so to speak? Okay. Um, um, let me go back to empathy again. Uh, let's put the case in point, um, a boss, for example, that's leading a team of five people to do a project, to execute a project. And it's important for that boss, not just to reel out instructions on what to be done. It's important for those boss to understand each member, each of those five people on the project, to know their abilities, mm -hmm. to understand their emotions, and how do you understand people's emotions? One way is to pay attention to them, ask the right questions care and show that you care. And based on this understanding, you give them the projects to be done. Because many times you realize that the reason people resign from particular work they do, people mm -hmm. don't leave jobs, they leave bosses, as it were. So when you're working with a difficult boss, somebody that is really, truly difficult, and you don't know how to manage that situation, the mm -hmm. person leaves the place. I mean, another case in point, an individual that doesn't know how to manage his emotion, and you're in customer service, for example, and the customer walks in, the customer talks to you anyhow, it doesn't matter what justification the customer thinks he has, mm -hmm. or what justification you have as the customer service agent. You've not insulted this customer, you've not done anything wrong to the customer. But because you cannot manage your anger, and because the customer talks to you anyhow, then immediately you need to let the customer know that you're not the kind of child that comes from the place that you cannot give a response. And so you give a response to the customer that is not appropriate, that will cause, that can cause the individual of his career, mm -hmm. that can cause the brand that the, the individual represents as well, it gives a negative light on the brand as well. So we're saying that with emotional intelligence, we can relate well with people based on our understanding of people and we can manage ourselves very well. Now, you have made me understand that we've moved from IQ, IQ to emotional intelligence, empathy. Now, what are the tips to developing intelligence, uh, 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 emotional intelligence? How okay. do we even identify the need for it? Okay, so the first competence required is self-awareness. Self-awareness is that I know myself. Many times when people are asked to talk about themselves, they either describe themselves with their nationality, their mm -hmm. gender, the school they attended, their tribe, all of those things. But that's not really the core of who you are. The core of who you are is the person on the inside. The core of who you are, are you an angry person? How do you respond to people? Do you respond rudely? Um, how do you handle situations where you need to uh, show courage? There's something you've not done before. Are you the kind of person that will be afraid to try 
time because you are afraid you will not attempt those are the things that uh, self-awareness talks about mm -hmm. now because you now know yourself with your self-awareness then you start to develop how to manage yourself you know that once somebody talks to you in a particular way you probably get angry and once people even know you more than you know yourself they will start to press what I call your mumu button mm -hmm. they know that something will get you angry because they know think about it when when you know secondary school or primary school the reason some of us had nicknames that stuck is because the first time somebody called you that name flipped. you you flipped and you you did not like it and then you got angry and they liked the way you were getting angry so anytime they want to tease you they use that against you but the moment you the moment they call you whatever name it is and you say yeah that is me it immediately loses the right. power of that thing and that is self-management meaning that now that you know yourself you know the traffic light you know what i call your mumu button mm -hmm. you guard it with all sense of diligence the fourth part of it is social awareness which is knowing other people um how do you get to understand other people pay attention to them but well, in a world that many people are selfish many people only focus on themselves and mm -hmm. you cannot get the best out of people when you only focus on yourself so ask people questions, observe them. There are things people may not say to you, but they are going through. Experts say that only 7% of communication is the words that we speak. That's that the right. other 93% has That's nothing right. to do with what we say. 38% of that is the tone of our voice. 55% of that is body language, the way we look. So we're paying attention to people, not just what is being said, mm -hmm. but more importantly, how that thing is being said will help you to know people a little bit more. And finally, because of what you now know about people, you manage relationships effectively. There's one statement I read many years ago that will be a guidance for uh, managing relationships effectively, which says that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Interesting. All right, final question will be now, when we talk about emotional intelligence, it tends to, it feels like it's more uh, geared towards the employee. Now let's talk about the employers. How do we pay, is there a need to pay attention even to the emotional needs of employers? Mm. You know, how does that also now relate to their interaction with employees? Great question, that's a great question. Emotional intelligence is for every human being. Whether you are the employer or you are the employee, whether you are the husband or you are the wife, whether mm. you are the parent or you are the child, every individual. There are times that employees would say that particular bosses are difficult. So, mm. oh, my boss is so difficult. And it's impossible. Uh, She's impossible. Yeah, yeah, this person is just impossible. The person makes extreme demands, excessive demands. But what the employee is supposed to do is to use that same empathy. Seek first to understand before you are understood. Because this boss that you say is difficult may not necessarily be difficult. Mm. But because you don't understand what the boss is asking you. Is the boss saying that this project that you are working on that the boss has rejected for three times is it saying that there is something you ought to fix that you've not fixed? Is it that you are working on that project out of the budget? Is it that you are working on that project beyond the time that is slated for the project? Is it that you are not carrying other stakeholders along that you are supposed to carry along in that project? Seeking first to understand the leader, the employer, what is that person asking for will help the employee to cultivate the right emotional intelligence to properly manage the boss. I believe that there are no bad people, mm -hmm. generally. Uh, there's a quote I read from Ella Sheila Wilcox, um, who said that there are no good people and there are no bad people. I said, why? Because the good people are half bad and the bad people are half, half good. good. And, 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 and that was revolutionary for me when I read that first. And it says to me that to relate effectively with people, seek first to understand them before you are understood. Thank you so very much, Abiola Salami, for sharing your thoughts there. Thank you for having me.